Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Zachary Powell, the Senior Android Developer Advocate at Vonage and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can write an Android application using Kotlin to receive a phone call from a mobile phone directly into your application. To do this we're going to be using the Vonage Client SDK you can find the written version of this tutorial over at developer.vonage.com as well as links to the source code for the sample project that we'll be using. So do make sure to go check that out. But with all that said, let's get into this tutorial. Let's get started. So of course, like with any tutorial, there's a couple of prerequisites that we do need to make sure we've done before we can get started. We are going to need a Vonage account so you can head over to the Vonage dashboard or just go to developer.vonage.com and click on the sign up button in the top corner and get yourself a free account set up so that you're able to then purchase a phone number and go through all that process. Next up we need to make sure that we have Node.js installed and you, this how you install this will depend on your platform but make sure that you do have Node installed and this is so we can both use the Vonage CLI but also so we can set up a basic web server that will be needed as well. So next up, we're going to install the Vonage CLI. And this is just a simple command line tool that will allow us to do a lot of the configuration that we would otherwise do through the dashboard or through a web server. And this just makes the process of this tutorial a little bit easier and it's also a bit easier to get started with just demoing and playing around with the SDKs. So we install this using the npm command here. And then once that's installed, we need to just set up our configuration to set up our API key and our API secret, both of which can be found on your dashboard once you've signed up for your Vonage account. And finally, of course, you're going to need Android Studio. This is an Android project and we are assuming that we're going to use Android Studio. So make sure that's all configured and set up if you would like to follow along with this tutorial. So let's start by setting up our webhook server. So when we receive an incoming phone call, Vonage will pass that phone call's information on to a publicly accessible URL via a webhook server. So we're going to start by creating a new directory for this project, and then we're just going to initialize a new Node.js project. And then we just need to install a couple of requirements. So we're going to be using Express and local tunnel to facilitate the local URL. We'll get those installed and once those are installed we can then go ahead and set up our server code. So I'm just going to copy this from the written tutorial which you'll be able to find again in the link in the description and here we have a subdomain that we need to set to make sure that it's kind of unique to us on the uh, local tunnel service. And then you'll see that there are two URL endpoints, the voice.answer, which is going to forward on the actual phone call to our app. And the other one is just logging out any events that happen on the voice calls. And then we have the code to actually set up the local tunnel. So we're going to save that and then we are going to start up our server. So with the server now running, the next thing we need to do is register our application with Vonage. So using the Vonage CLI, we can type out this using apps create we can give our application a name so just go to app tutorial is fine and we need to set the voice answer url so this is to tell vonage where to send our voice calls to so that we can route them to the app and then we also need to set the event url url as well which will tell vonage where to send all voice events for our application so again so we can log those in our our web server once that's all set up, the application will be created and we'll be given an application ID. Keep this in mind as we're going to need this shortly. You'll also see that some key files have also been generated, which we'll also need. OK, so next we need to purchase a number from Vonage. And so this is the phone number that people will be able to call to have those calls routed into our app. We can do this from the dashboard or we can use the CLI here to search for available numbers and then specifically buy a number from the command line. This is the command that we'd use. I'm not going to go ahead and do that because I don't need a number. So I already have a number on my account. So I'm going to go ahead now and link that phone number to this application. So we use the application ID we got when we registered the application and then use the number 
that we've just either bought or we already have on our Vonage account. And that will link the two together so we know that that phone number relates to that app. Next, we need to create a user for our application. And here we're just going to use the command line to use do that using the Vonage command. And we'll create a user called Alice. And this will generate the user with the user ID. Finally, let's create a JWT so we can authenticate with our application. Again, we can use the command line to do this using the JWT command. We'll specify the application ID for the application we've created. The subject will be the user that we've just created. We also need to specify the key file that was generated when we created the application. And finally, we need to pass it in the permissions that we want to give that user. So I'm just going to copy this from the written tutorial. Once that's generated, we'll have our JWT token that we need to authenticate with our application when we're connecting to the Vonage service. And that's all the configuration that we need. So we can jump into Android Studio now. Here, I just have a completely blank, fresh project using the blank activity template. So let's start by adding in the dependency that we're going to need and the Gradle configuration around that. So first we need to set up our Maven repository to be able to pull in the things that we need for this dependency. And then we'll hop over into our build.gradle file and we'll implement the com.nexmo.android client SDK. And this is the Vonage SDK that has all of the voice related services that we need to be able to accept this voice call within our application. We're then going to do some further configuration. We just need to enable Jetifier for this dependency. And then we also just need to increase our JVM memory size just to make sure that we have enough to process the stripping through Jetifier. And that's the Gradle side of the configuration all set up, ready to go. Next up, as I'm sure you can expect, we have some permissions that we need to set. Here, pretty standard, we need the permission to connect to the internet and manage the internet connection. And then also we need to be able to record audio so we can actually pass that back to whoever's calling us. So these are the only permissions we actually need, but the record audio permission is a special permission. You do have to request it at runtime. So in this example, we're gonna do the absolute bare minimum way of doing this and literally request that permission at the launch of the app when the screen first is shown and do that every time. Of course, in a production application, this isn't the way you'd necessarily do that. Handle your permissions how you see fit. But and this is how we're going to do it here. So next up, we're going to create a very basic view for our application. Uh, in this instance, it's literally just going to be three buttons, an answer button, a reject button, and an end button, as well as a text view to display the current status of the phone call or the connection that's being made. So that's our very basic view. That's just copied over from the text tutorial. Let's just get that all wired in to the main activity class as well. And then we're ready to make use of that. Next, we're going to initialize the uh, Vonage client. So we can do this by creating a client object and using the builder to pass in the current context and create an instance of the client. We can then set the connection listener so we can keep up to date with the current status of the connection and update the connection status text view with that current status, just so the user can see whether they're currently in a call, if it's been disconnected and what's happened. Finally, we're gonna log in using that JWT that we generated earlier. So now we're actually ready to accept a call. Let's create a call object, which is just going to keep track of the current phone call if there is one ongoing. Uh, and then we're gonna create a incoming call listener. So when we receive requests for a phone call, we can assign that as the current call and we can set the current state for our different action buttons as we need. So we have an incoming call. We need the option to be able to either answer the call or reject the call, but we're not currently in a call, so we don't need to end the call. So we set those three options. We're then gonna create on-click listeners for each of those buttons and each one will have its own method to call. So we'll have a, an answer call method, we'll have a reject call method, and then we'll have an end call method. And this is how we kind of manage the states that the call is currently in. So let's go ahead and create those three methods. So we'll start with the answer call method. And here, if we've clicked that, we know that we actually do want to start the call. So we're gonna call the answer 
method on the call object and we can pass in a request listener and that will let us know if the request has been successful. So if there was an error with connecting the call, we would get that here. But otherwise, we know that it was successful. So we can set the correct visibility to the buttons. We're now actually in a call. So we don't need the answer call button and we don't need the reject call button. But we will want the end call button as we may at some point want to actually end the call. Next, we have a look at the reject call. So again, we can on the call object, we can just use the hang up method to end a call even if we haven't actually started the call and we'll pass that in with the next mobile request listener again so we know whether or not that hang up was successful we can process any errors and more importantly for us we can set the current buttons that are visible to the user so again we're not going to want the answer call button anymore we're not going to want the reject call button anymore we're actually not going to want the end call button either so we're now at kind of a blank slate with nothing is going on Finally, we have the end call method. Well, actually, this is going to look exactly the same as our reject call method for this instance, because they're the same process. So now we can fire up the application. As you can see, it asks us for our audio permissions, and then we're connected to the Vonage servers. So here on the left, we have the pixel 4, which we're going to initialize the call to the phone number that's linked to the application. And you can see that this comes through into our application and we can either answer or reject the call. Once we've answered, it creates the audio connection and we have a phone call between the two devices. Here we can then end the call from within the application and you'll see that on the phone, the call also ends. So if we go back over to the terminal, you can see all the event data that's been sent through via the API. And there's three kind of components to this. We have the details about the incoming call request here. We have the initial started event for when we started the call. And then at the bottom here, we also have the complete event for when we ended the call. And that's a wrap. That's everything today for this tutorial. We now have a fully working phone to app application. So if you'd like to know more, do make sure that you check out the developer.vonage.com website, where you'll find lots of other tutorials, all the documentation about the different Vonage APIs, and of course, all the sample code that we've used in this application as well. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.